We're at the Musée du Louvre and we're looking at Angres' Grand Odelisque. What's interesting is that this painting was originally commissioned. Angres hired to paint it by the sister of Napoleon, who at that time was married to the king of Naples. What's sort of also interesting is that by the time Angres finished the painting and delivered it, well, they were gone. Napoleon had been deposed and they were no longer ruling Naples. But this did get shown in the Salon of 1819, nevertheless. And caused a real scandal. For a number of reasons. First of all, it's a female nude, and it's not Venus. It's an odalisque, and an odalisque is a woman in a harem. You know, of course, Ang had never been in a harem, and so this is very much a Western idea of what a harem would be like. Okay, so I think that's really important, because historically this is completely inaccurate. Right. But it is very much a 19th century French construction of what they imagined, that sort of luxury-laden, sensuous and distant experience was. Yeah, it's a real French fantasy. It's a real French fantasy. France, of course, was a colonial power in that part of the world. And some art historians have written that in some ways these sorts of paintings were a kind of justification for France in that part of the world. And for France, imagining itself as superior to that culture. And therefore having a kind of moral right to civilize. So it is very imperialist in its thinking. But at the same time as we're saying that, we have to imagine the Parisians in 1819 taking pleasure in looking at this odorist. Quite a bit of pleasure, and we see the same pleasure in the viewers in the Louvre right now. It is this voluptuous and very sensuous expression of the human body, one that is heightened, because although Angra comes out of the neoclassical tradition, was a student of David's, he is also this important kind of bridge to Romanticism. But in this particular rendering, Angra has taken the fidelity to anatomy as secondary. And what's most important to him is the sensuality of the figure. For instance, he's extended the back. One might even argue there are extra vertebrae. He has placed her left leg in a sort of impossible position. If one imagines where that leg would connect with the hip, it doesn't quite work in relationship to the other hip. And so there's a kind of languidness that he's able to achieve that would be impossible with a kind of anatomical accuracy. And there is a kind of tension, I think, between sensuality and a kind of distance that Aang puts between us and the figure. I think that's a really important point. We do see her back, but she turns back towards us. But that look is an icy aloof and distant look. It's and hardly inviting. No, it is hardly inviting. And there's the direct eye contact and yet there's distance. There's always that conflict in this painting. I think that's exactly right. The other thing is that the sensuality of the interior in some ways really competes, at least for me, with the nude female figure. That velvet of the cushion that she's on, I can feel those things. You can almost hear her skin against those fabrics. Yes. It's so interesting, if you look at the composition, the frame is actually quite long, like her body is, but she almost doesn't fit. That is to say, she literally comes close to touching all four edges of this canvas. So we see in this odalisque an image that is very much what we would consider romanticism, an interest in the exotic. Sensuality. And a kind of sensuality. Although he seems to be the standard bearer for the academic tradition, he doesn't really uphold that 100%. So it's interesting because he comes out of the neoclassical and he's got that precision and that sense of the morality of painting. But and the then, interest in line. But then he is a sensualist in his painting, in fact. And that's something that ebbs and flows but is with him for his entire career. Mm -hmm.